Hello everyone and welcome to Programming in Access 2013, the advanced course. My name is Steve Bishop and in today's video we're going to be talking about adding navigation controls. Now navigation controls on their surface look very similar to tab controls, but as we'll see there are some very important differences between navigation controls and tab controls. So let's go ahead and hop out here and take a look at our database. And here is our form one where we put together those tabs, that tab control. And we're gonna follow the same type of look to our navigation control. We're gonna put three buttons across the top here and we're gonna display different forms, different data below each one of these tabs based upon what the user has selected. So let's go ahead and get, click on create and go to form design. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on the navigation control button here under the design tab. And I'm gonna draw the size of the box of the control as big as I want it. And when I let go, you'll see that there's this extra box that pops up down below here. Well, that's not really what we wanted, right? We were expecting everything to be inside of the area that I drew to. So what I'm gonna do instead here, just to show you, is I'm gonna actually just click on the navigation control. And if you click in the upper left-hand corner of where you want the navigation control to start at, it will automatically populate as the at the at the size it's got a default size that it opens up at so what's going on here why are there the, why is there this extra space below the navigation control well that's because the navigation control actually is comprised of three different components there's what is actually called the navigation control you can see i have selected here something called the uh, a selection type of navigation control and it's called navigation control 7 Inside of the navigation control, there are navigation buttons. And there, these navigation buttons are gonna go across the top here. Then below it here, there's a navigation subform. And you can see the selection type is a subform or subreport. And that is very similar to what we had here with our tabs, if you think about it, right? We have our special uh, tab orders, which is actually the entire control. Then inside of it, we have each separate individual tab or what they called pages. And then on each one of the page, there was a subform control. So navigation control really does all of that for us with one simple little click. You don't need to do the subform drawing, you don't need to do, you know, uh, you know, additions of buttons and stuff. It's kind of already gives you a pre given out layout to the navigation control. So let's go ahead and add our navigation buttons across the top here. Let's do active orders. Oops, active odors, <laughs> active orders. There we go. Then we have uh, inventory to re order. And then we finally have customer orders. Okay. Now these buttons don't resize to fit the text. So what you need to do is there's these little handles on the side of the buttons that when you hover the mouse over them, they re they uh, bring up this double arrow so you can resize, you know, make the buttons wider. If you just double click on it, it will automatically resize the button to fit the text. So we'll do that for all three of those. Okay, let's go ahead and rename these buttons here too. So I'm going to call this nav button active orders. And then inventory to reorder is going to be nav button inventory to reorder. And then for customer orders, let's go ahead and name this nav button customer orders. While I'm at it, let me go ahead and name the navigation control. We'll call it nav orders. And now let's go ahead and let's go to active orders here and click the, now we've got the subform object underneath the active orders and it's called navigation subform. Let me go ahead and call this uh, sub active orders. And now let me go to inventory to reorder and click on the subform here and, well, wait a minute. It's already named sub active orders. It's named the same thing as what I named it here. So what's going on here? Well, the subform is actually just one form. Each one of these three different tabs will reuse this subform underneath it. So there's no need, like with what we had here, to add a separate subform for each tab. Instead, with the navigation control, 
you only need the one subform and it will actually replace the source object that fills in this subform with the appropriate form based upon what you click on up here in the tabs. So our active orders subform, we don't really need to name it this because it's just one subform that's going to be used for each one of our buttons. So let's call this sub orders. Okay. So now you can see inventory to reorder, name is called suborders. Customer orders, if I click on the subform below it, suborders. So the same subform object is being used regardless of which button you have selected. Now what you need to do is you need to associate with the button which form object should appear down below here in the subform. And the way you do that is you click on the button you click on the data tab over here and you'll see that there is a property in here called navigation target name. And you can click on the drop down here and select which form you want to appear in the sub form control. So let's go ahead and select the active orders for the active orders button. And inventory to reorder is going to be the inventory to reorder sub form and customer orders is going to be the customer orders sub form. So there you go. That's all you need to do. Let me go ahead and close the form one just so that there's no erroneous uh, events that happen here. And now when I go ahead and view this, you'll see that we do indeed get the different sub form appearing below here based upon which button we select across the top. So that portion works. But now we've got our problem here where we have no data inside of our subforms. And that's because if you recall back when we were dealing with form one, when we were doing the tabs, we had this, uh, this procedure here, which filled in the SQL string, right? And then applied that SQL string to the record source of the form that was loaded inside of our subform. Well, we need to do a very similar thing now, okay? Because now we remember we took out on each one of these forms, we took out this record source, right? We took it out, we deleted it so that the functionality, the event handlers here would actually fill in the SQL string and apply the record source to that particular form. So we need to do a similar thing now with our navigation control. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this load tab subroutine. And now I'm going to go back here to my form two, and I'm going to click on the view code button up here. And just so you know, you can get to the view code if, under the design tab. If you've got the view code button there and then it'll pop up the, uh, the applications, uh, you know, this, this window here. So options, option explicit. And then let me go ahead and paste that load tab subroutine here. And I'm going to name it load nav instead of load tab. And it's going to work very similarly. There is a problem though here. It doesn't work quite identically. The me.taborders.value, if you recall, gave back a numerical page index value based upon which tab was currently selected. So we have this me orders dot pages page index that it's being compared against, right? Because this is returning the specific page index value of the tab that's being selected. It doesn't quite work that way with navigation controls because there is no page index. There's really no defining characteristic or index to that particular button. So what we have to do instead is we have to compare our select case against the me dot nav orders. And there is a property on the nav orders called the selected tab. And on that selected tab, there's an additional property called the name. And this will actually give us the name of the tab that is currently selected. Okay, so that's how you get and this is going to return back a string value of the name of this currently selected tab. So now we need to fix our case selects or our cases here so that instead of looking at the page index value, we can actually compare the name of the tab that we that we uh, that we have in our navigation control to the one that's being selected here. OK, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to the others tab. 
for our active orders button and I'm just going to copy the name here. And now I can change this from case is equal to that page index to just simply the name of our button or, or the name of our navigation button. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing for inventory to reorder. I'm going to just copy this and again paste that and then we have our customer orders which is nav button customer orders okay so there we go now we have the same sql strings that are associated with each one of the uh forms that are being loaded so we don't need to change we don't really need to worry about the sql strings because they're all correct for what we want but now we have to look at this part here, where in the tab controls, we had three separate subforms. So we had sub active orders, we had sub inventory to reorder, and we had sub customer orders. But now with our navigation control, we have just the one subform called sub orders. So instead of selecting a different subform, we need to actually just go ahead and click on or select our sub orders form and that's all we need to do we just need to change that from the specific name of our three different subforms to this one subform name so let's go ahead and copy that and paste that here copy that paste that here and then of course the next step is that it, it gets requeried so let's just go ahead and do the requery I'm just going to copy to this dot here and paste it here and do the same thing for these. Okay, so that will work, but there's just kind of this little thing that I have about having more concise code. Because this command here is the same command that's gonna be issued here, and it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be issued here. So all three of these lines, or all six of these lines, are basically identical, right? This one is identical to this one, which is identical to this one. So why would we copy and paste the same bit of code? We should just be reusing it. It's a special, they actually call it code reuse. So let's copy this, and I'm gonna put it at the end of our select statement, so that regardless of which button has been selected, it will always set the record source equal to the SQL string. And I'm gonna go one step further and set the SQL string equal to a blank string to start with. And now I can just delete all of those me subform form record source uh, from each one of these case statements because it's going to be run at the end of our select. So we've actually kind of shortened up our code. I could even kind of do this to add out and take out those extra spaces that are unnecessary. So there we go. That is all that we need to do in order to essentially mimic the same thing as what we've got on our tabs for this private uh, subroutine called load nav. But now we need to actually trigger this load nav event at the appropriate times. And if you recall, when the form first loaded up for our tabs, we wanted to do an on load event that called our load tab, right? So we kind of need to do the same thing here for the on load event of our navigation control. So we'll go on load, go to the code builder, add the load nav, and there we go. So there's our on load, or our form load event, okay? But there is one pretty significant difference here that we need to consider. Remember that we had the ability to go to the on change event for whenever a different button was selected. But in the navigation control, there is no on change event. So what you actually have to do is for each one of the buttons that gets clicked on, you need to add a reference back to that load nav subroutine. So we'll go to the on click event for active orders button, go to the code builder, and now we we'll just do load nav. Oops. And now we'll do the same thing for the inventory to reorder. And then last but not least, the customer orders. And 
and save that. Now I could have, of course, for each one of the clicks, instead of having this case select, I could have just gone in and you know done the SQL string and done the me sub form sub orders form and all that good stuff. But I really like having this design of having one subroutine that manages uh, all of those events and then just call that one subroutine for each event that happens. Uh, I just think it's a little bit better of a pattern. So let's go ahead and close form one so I don't get any sort of erroneous things. Let's go ahead and click on view for form two and voila, there is the same navigation options as what we had with our tabs, but now you can see it, uh, it has the navigation control doing the same things that our navigation ta or our tabs did in the form one. So let me go ahead and open form one. You can see very, very similar, right? It's very, very similar. Okay, now in our next video, I'm gonna show you how to do something really, really cool with navigation uh, and, and really kind of the things that, that separates navigation apart from tabs. And I can give you a quick little hint here. If you click on the Create Tab button to go, and normally you would click on Form Design, you'll see that there's this navigation option here. And if you click on the drop down, you'll see, look at this, you've got the horizontal tabs, which is what we've got now, but you've got vertical tabs on the left. You can move the vertical tabs to the right. You can have two levels of tabs. You can have horizontal tabs and vertical tabs on the left, or you can have horizontal tabs and vertical tabs on the right. So you have a whole different configuration, uh, different types of configurations you can put these tabs that run across the top. So instead of having them across the top, you can put them on the side. You can have two sets of them so that they run across the top and run across the side. All sorts of great stuff. And that really kind of is a very typical scenario for what you might see on a website. And that's what makes navigation controls very, very uh, usable is because they kind of give the same look and feel as you would get with a website. So we'll be going over that in the next video, and I hope to see you there.